Hollywood has been trying to make live-action adaptations of video games and anime for decades. But with mixed results. Look at this. <laughs> for the most part, they've all failed. These mediums have proved far more challenging to adapt to the screen than books or comics, leading to many considering it a lost cause. The curse of the live-action adaptation has caused most audiences to remain skeptical at best or to avoid them entirely. Despite all these failures, there is just too much profit incentive for studios to give up on these enormous franchises. But what makes these mediums so difficult to adapt to the screen? And with the success of shows like The Last of Us and One Piece this year, is the curse finally being broken? Hollywood has always relied on adapting other mediums to the screen. A successful book not only comes with an existing fan base, but also fleshed out characters and a well-written narrative. The bones of the script are already there, so adapting books to film and TV was a tried and true technique for decades that led to some cinema classics. For the studios that bankroll the industry, it's a much safer bet to invest in an adaptation rather than anything original. While some studios like A24 push against that idea and high-profile directors like Christopher Nolan can still have their original ideas funded, Hollywood is dominated by sequels, reboots and cinematic universes. Despite directors like Martin Scorsese saying that Marvel movies aren't cinema and comparing them to theme parks, Quentin Tarantino lamenting that there are no movie stars anymore, only franchise characters, and audiences generally being fully aware of this problem, live-action adaptations of big franchises are here to stay. If a studio is going to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into a project, they expect to make a profit. An original creative vision is simply far more risky than an adaptation. A recognisable franchise comes with a dedicated fan base and benefits from nostalgia. My name is Optimus Prime. So even if the end product is a creative disaster, audiences are still likely to watch it. These adaptations also function as advertisements for the original product, driving even more sales and nostalgia for an ongoing cycle. It's too profitable for that to change. And since the explosive success of live-action comic book adaptations, Hollywood is looking to other mediums for the next gold rush. But adapting a book or a comic franchise is one thing. Adapting anime and video games comes with an entirely different set of challenges. Video games especially have one huge problem to solve. The whole point of that medium is that the player controls the main character, making every decision and having a unique experience depending on their playstyle. While one player might prefer a cautious and stealthy approach, another might play through the entire experience guns blazing. The protagonists of video games are deliberately shallow characters because the developers want the player to insert themselves into the game. Link from The Legend of Zelda famously never speaks, as Nintendo wants the player to imagine their own voice coming from the character to help them feel like the hero. Trying to adapt games to a live-action experience becomes difficult when your protagonist is deliberately underdeveloped. However you might flesh out that character also pushes it further away from what the individual player was imagining in their playthrough. While anime doesn't suffer from this problem, there are some other similarities with video games that make the two more difficult to adapt than other mediums. Video games didn't start in Japan, but the country dominated the industry at its early stages and left an indelible mark. Super Mario Brothers. The manga and anime industries were also kickstarted by the influence of American comics and Disney films during American occupation after World War II. Yet the Japanese creators that defined these industries established distinct creative styles that set them apart. Stylistically, anime and video games share a lot of that Japanese influence. Whether it's imaginative worlds like Mario's Mushroom Kingdom or Studio Ghibli's Enchanted Fables, outlandish character designs with colourful hair or power systems that the characters learn to harness for godlike abilities, these are difficult elements to adapt into the grounded live action of traditional Hollywood. It'll take huge CGI budgets and a lot of finesse for costumes and makeup to match the source material yet not look like cosplay. The illustrative style that defines anime is also difficult to translate to a camera lens. Orbiting cameras with extreme wide and low angles are difficult with bulky film equipment. The iconic head shape of anime characters feels uncanny in live action, and despite notable attempts to translate visual expressions of power in a realistic way, some things just can't easily make that leap. In the early days of video game and anime adaptations especially, these disparities were more extreme. Don't turn your back on me! You're already dead. Ah! 
16-bit video games utilize bright colors and wild worlds to take advantage of hardware limitations and appeal to children. That perception of video games and anime being for kids also meant that there wasn't enough respect for the source material to warrant high budgets and cutting-edge visual effects, which led to some absolute trash fires. It has begun! Brother. You're alive. Too bad you will die. Ways, the undervaluing of the source material also led to a lot being lost in translation, both in the figurative sense of the drastic story alterations and the literal sense with the Americanization of some of the Japanese elements. These early failures were the beginning of that cursed reputation, and these same problems still haunt live action adaptations to this day. Beyond the stylistic difficulties, trying to compress an entire anime series or video game into a 90-minute blockbuster is a tall order. The amount of important characters and essential lore of any given anime series or video game doesn't easily fit the three-act structure of Western films. Eastern storytelling quite often doesn't fit that structure either, so adapting Japanese works to Western conventions like the monomyth or hero's journey can be challenging. There's also the differing stylistic trends of Hollywood, such as the gritty and dark storytelling phase of the 2010s, leading to some dour and often cringy adaptations. All these factors contribute to an impression of fitting a square peg into a round hole. Of course, not all video games are Japanese, and anime has inspired plenty of American series too. There's also a long history of anime and video game adaptations that didn't come from the Hollywood machine, many of which are often exempt from the cursed reputation. The rise of AAA American action games, though, is a comparatively recent phenomenon. And American series like Avatar and Transformers still bear the stylistic hallmarks of their Japanese inspirations and the challenges that come with that. Hollywood studios also favor the most iconic franchises that generate the most nostalgia. So those pioneering Japanese titles with gaming mascots and bright colors still take priority. Another fundamental element of the curse doesn't actually stem from Hollywood's failure, but from the audience. Fans of an original franchise can be so passionate about the source material that any deviation can feel like sacrilege. Adaptations always require some amount of alterations in order to fit the new medium, but fans often feel protective of the original work that defined their childhood and identity. Sometimes this toxicity can become extreme, with fans believing that political agendas are polluting their favourite work and lashing out at actors and others involved in productions. Other times, internet trolls just enjoy making inflammatory comments for their own enjoyment, or influencers provoke engagement using clickbait titles. In the simplest sense though, nostalgia is a double-edged sword. An adaptation is a method of Hollywood tapping into an existing fandom, yet the standards of those fans are often impossibly high. Even if the end product is close to flawless, the curse remains a formidable barrier for a range of reasons. Despite all of these challenges and so many failures, how is it that in 2023 we have had both a video game and an anime live action adaptation being so well received that headlines are reading that they've finally broken the curse? For video games, technology advances over the years have enabled developers to create truly cinematic experiences. The video game industry is no longer just entertainment for children. It's full of rich storytelling and mature themes that borrow from cinema history. The Last of Us was intentionally crafted to feel cinematic, utilizing a variety of film techniques to make cutscenes feel like Hollywood productions and characters feel fleshed out and believable. There were also accusations of designing the game's key character Ellie after film star Elliot Page, one of the few early examples of using a real actor's likeness to help a game feel more cinematic. Since these groundbreaking titles, it's become commonplace for games to cast famous actors in their roles. Of all the nostalgic games to adapt to live action, these cinematic qualities might have made The Last of Us one of the easiest of all. For a great deal of other games, that leap won't be so easy. Even other cinematic titles like God of War would require enormous CGI budgets in comparison to The Last of Us. What's important though is that The Last of Us received critical acclaim, Studios will be far more willing to invest in live-action video game adaptations in the wake of that success. 
For anime, the success of comic book adaptations in the MCU have naturally drawn attention to Japanese comics, the hugely popular manga industry. With anime itself predominantly being adaptations of successful manga, anime acts as a shortcut for Hollywood to identify which series to develop into live action, and a blueprint for an episodic structure. Disney's domination of the industry with Marvel and Star Wars has also demonstrated that mech suits, colourful characters and fantastical worlds are finally achievable with a big enough budget. Not only are the once prohibitive stylistic elements of video games and anime now attainable visually, the precedence has been set for audiences to invest themselves in complex world builds and power systems. Another hugely important factor is the rise of prestige television. My reign has just begun. A high-budget series allows enough time to incorporate the many characters and expansive worlds of anime and video games. Without the constraints of the feature film format, faithful live-action adaptations become far more tenable. Maybe the biggest of all, though, is that the stigma of video games and anime being for children is finally starting to fade. Hollywood has seen comic books taken seriously with the source material respected, which in turn has helped perceptions change across a wide range of mediums once dismissed as only for children. Hollywood is beginning to understand that honouring the source material is a hugely important factor for success. Now all of a sudden, One Piece stands as one of the first anime adaptations to preserve the stylistic streams of anime with a sizable enough budget to make it look believable. The Last of Us has no doubt paved the way for more cinematic video games to get their own prestige series. While One Piece and The Last of Us aren't perfect and they may not have fully broken the curse, they are significant stepping stones for live action adaptations. Some fans might hate them for not being faithful enough and they might not be everyone's cup of tea even for new audiences. But there is no denying their success. Their critical acclaim will inevitably lead to Hollywood taking these mediums seriously. And who knows, maybe instead of superheroes dominating the box office, it will eventually be anime and manga franchises. Will there be more live-action abominations to come? Absolutely. Will every anime and video game series have the same advantages as The Last of Us or the budget of One Piece? Of course not. There will be plenty more cursed anime and video game adaptations that will either ruin more childhood memories or be terrible enough to laugh at. Brilliant. What's important is that there have been some that worked. We're hoping that this leads to more quality live-action adaptations, staying faithful to the source material and getting budgets large enough to showcase the vast worlds of our favourite anime and video games. If it'll help people get into anime, that's enough for us. Until then, subscribe to our channel for anime recommendations and more videos like this. Let us know if you think the curse has been broken and which of your favourite anime and video games you'd love to see in live-action. We're a very small operation, so if you want to support our channel, get yourself one of our Gateway to Anime t-shirts. We also have a Patreon where you can get early releases of videos like this and even suggest things for us to make next. Thanks for watching, see you next time.